uh, in preparing for this joint, I like to make sure that my reference faces are true. I mark them with an R. You see they're at 90 degrees. If the, uh, if the faces are at a square, what will happen is that the dimension on this side will not match the dimension on the opposing side. And when you go to cut these, those will also be out of square. So we'll try to avoid all that. One of the other things I like to do is cut back from this, uh, see the grain and what it looks like from the middle, the wood. And so uh, I like to cut back from that a little bit. There doesn't appear to be any cracks, but uh, just in case, cut off about a quarter of an inch or three eighths. And so I start cutting these by marking. And if you want to transfer your marks accurately, what I do is just put the knife right back in the gauge line, in the knife line I should say. And you know you've done it correctly if you can transfer from one end of the back to the other end and the lines match. Perfect. And so next I'll show you how to cut this end off square. Because a lot of people, when it comes to hand tools, have trouble cutting, cross-cutting square. This is how I do it. The sole is a pull cut sole, and so I start on the opposing corner. The reason being is that the blade will be under tension. Once I establish a curve, I can follow down my knife line on the front. Flip the board, do the same. perfectly flat on the end, but I did want it to be roughly accurate so that when I when I transfer my uh, my dimensions, they're reasonably accurate in terms of length. So what I'm going to do is put a mark on this side that gives me an, an overall length, and then I'm going to uh, use the edge, the reference face to actually make the mark baseline here. And so I establish this baseline first and then since I do not want my uh, my faces to have lines all over them, what I'll do is just mark the corner 
roll the piece. Mark the corner again. Then I'm going to use my reference face transfer marks. And then we'll have some small overlap, but nothing too uh, too offensive. Now I use my gauge. Mark the sides. Mark the top. Mark the other side using the same reference face in, in this case. And so what we'll have here is a square cut once this is all cut out. So sometimes the question is, do I start with the mortise first or the tenon first? And so I suppose in this case this is the mortise. <coughs> and my response is always that it doesn't make a difference because we're going from gauge marks. I'm continuing the same procedure. I'm creating a curve. Creating a curve. Then I follow it on through to the uh, mark on the front. So what I want to make sure I'm doing here is creating a flat floor. Two is relatively critical. A little better lighting. And what I did there was that I started my saw cut just slightly off of the line. Uh, not purposefully, but um, it sometimes happens. And so what I did was just work the saw a little bit to get back on the line. The next step in the process here I do on the floor with a sacrificial piece of lumber underneath. And that's just cut to the baseline. You want to get rid of most of the most of the waste before you go in. Take your final pass right at the baseline. And at this point, I don't mind a slight undercut. Don't want to go nuts on the undercutting because it uh, takes away from the structure of the joint. In my understanding. I left a lot on the back side here, so it's going to take some more work.
And you just want to make sure that there's no hump in the center. So now I determine exactly which joint is which. Mark, make a mark on the bottom. So I've got one and two done already, so now we're on three and four. And then I'll mark the corresponding piece of three and four. So the next thing I'll do is to set this up. Roughly square. And the gauge mark on the right. Then I'm going to make a small mark on the opposing side. That's number three. Here's number four. Now there's a reason why I don't draw it all the way across and that's because I'd have to square this up before doing so. Instead, I can just make a small mark and then use my square to make it square. Now again, when I get to the back side here, this is where I see if I'm doing accurate work. Yes. And the last thing to do is to make my gauge marks for thickness. In this case, the thickness is going to be removed. I have another gauge set up to the exact same dimensions, but modified for use with this thinner piece. Now I'm going to flip it over like this, so I'm using the same face for reference. And so that way, if this dimension is not the exact same as this dimension, which it probably isn't, 
then when I cut these out, I'll still be cutting square to the faces. And so when the joints line up, they'll line up square. Because we're dealing with 40 inches here, and so I need the joints to line up correctly. Use a cross cut Tazuki. I'll mark the insides because I'm going to cut basically on the inside of my knife marks. Overcuts, it weakens the joint. So the first method that I showed was paring, now the second method I'll show is chopping. The key to success with this is obviously to use straight grain joiner, uh, straight grain wood 